Connectivity is about people, places and things. While it feels like connectivity is omnipresent, billions of people still lack basic internet access. But even areas with highly developed infrastructure may experience temporary network disruptions due to natural disasters. The current connectivity ecosystem relies on just two basic methods to deliver a connection. One is signal from space, the other is signal from the ground. Whereas 50% of Earth's landmass lacks coverage from traditional terrestrial internet infrastructure, 3.8 billion people, or about half of humanity, don't have access to the internet, and many more lack adequate access. Internet of Things promises life-changing technologies, but only with connectivity. If we want to connect more people, places and things, we need something more. We need a third layer to the connectivity ecosystem. In 2011, a research and development project called Project Loon was started by Google X, with the purpose to provide internet access to rural and remote areas around the world. Their challenge was to build a new layer of connectivity technology in the stratosphere, to connect regions once thought of as unservable. They send balloons up in the air at about 20 kilometers from the ground, which house the communication equipment that is needed to connect users below. Linked together with wireless signals, multiple loon flight systems work together to provide sustained coverage over extremely large areas. They receive wireless internet connection from the ground and then transmit it to people and places that can be thousands of kilometers far from the ground stations. Not only does the loon bring connectivity to isolated parts of the world, but it also serves as a backup infrastructure in case of disasters, where connectivity is needed the most. Unfortunately, the venture turned out to be a black hole for the parent company's finances. With an operating loss of 1.8 billion US dollars, the adventure sadly came to an end the January of this year. We decided to prove that this idea should leave. There had to be another more affordable way to bring connectivity to the world. Using Internet of Things technologies, open protocol standards and the Riot operating system, we aimed for designing an affordable successor at miniature scale that is accessible and reproducible as an open source project for everyone. By putting up our very own balloons, we wanted to set up a network infrastructure that would serve as a backup network in case of a disaster that could knock out our main connectivity system. Our project called MiniLoon held onto these principles. To prove that our small balloons can also provide communication service, we built a working prototype that is able to send and receive data, connect with the cloud and execute user commands. In addition, we equipped our mini loons to measure environmental data. Giving the mini loon advanced navigation capabilities, we also added actuators to control its altitude. The location-based measurements are visualized in a user-friendly app. To achieve this, we separate it into teams. Team Balloon Control, with Tobias and Lasse designing the hardware and Michael, Karl and Johannes writing the software for the measurements. Team Gateway Cloud, with Tristan, Katarina and Lasse taking care of the communication Balloon Cloud and Communication Cloud app. Team Smartphone App with Diogo Schumba, Diogo Henriques and Bruno realizing the representation of the data in a beautifully designed smartphone application. Sophia and I took responsibility in managing the project and making the puzzle complete. We developed using agile methods. By determining the user stories, we focused on developing a functional pipeline, which would be modular and cohesive at the same time. Team Balloon Control went on to find the most suitable hardware for the task. 
As the mini loom cannot lift too much payload, we were constricted to keep the board at a weight of 30 grams, which made the choice even harder. The BME 280 sensor from Bosch, that can measure temperature, air pressure and humidity, turned out to be the most efficient choice for our requirements. With a weight of only 0.9 grams and a price of $4.5, this sensor can also work with the SOL interface, the usage of which are demonstrated in the Riot example code. At first the sensor was connected to the ESP32 board that would later serve as a reference for our own custom PCB. Meanwhile, the Gateway team had set up the Raspberry Pi 4 and decided to develop using Golang. To take advantage of the language's easy handling of multi-threading and parallelism. Because of the nature of the Agile development, Team's smartphone app had also simultaneously started with the first mockups for the front end and decided to build an Android app using Flutter, a new UI development kit from Google, and Dart as a programming language. Due to the benefits of the platform use, they also set up a database using Google Firebase, where all the measured data would be stored. As soon as everything was up and running, the challenge was to connect the pieces together. To be able to transmit data to the gateway, the balloons had to use a communication channel, for which Team Balloon Control used the constrained application protocol, commonly known as CoAP. CoAP is a lightweight web transfer protocol especially designed for IoT devices. Using the example code from Riot, we made sure that our different devices were able to communicate with each other via CoAP. In the next step, we expanded the example code so that when a device sends a request for a specific sensor value, the reading of this sensor is triggered and the sensor value is returned to the other device. Team Gateway had already implemented a co-op gateway and set up a connection to the Firebase, so we were ready to start testing. The first values were successfully transmitted all the way from the sensor to the app and we could see the changing temperature when holding on to the sensor. This raised the spirits in the team and despite the ongoing lockdown, we kept developing in the lab giving our best to collaborate while following the safety regulations as needed. On the first milestone we were able to demonstrate not only temperature but also humidity and air pressure measurements recorded in the small spaces of the lab. Having built a backbone network for the communication, our goal was to expand the usability of the mini loons and release more features to solidify our business case. Because of the limited range of our Wi-Fi communication, which does not exceed more than 300 meters outdoors, our next steps included implementing a long-range solution. For that part, the LoRaWAN, which is a low-power wireless network protocol, came in handy. This protocol supports data transmission up to 10 km of range and is really power efficient, which makes it perfect for our purposes. The LoRa radio module weighs 2.1 grams and costs only $4. Hi, my name is Michael and I've worked on the firmware for the board that we are attaching to the balloon. And uh, while doing this, I've worked with LoRaWAN and the Things Network. And we use the Things Network uh, with the LoRaWAN protocol to communicate with the, with the gateway. The Balloon Control team created an application on the Things Network, a community-based initiative to expand the LoRaWAN network globally. This network offers a series of tools and an open network for IoT applications that is secure and easily scalable. To make the transmission of data more efficient and less power consuming, the team translated the data to the Seaboard format and then sent it to the LoRaWAN gateway, which forwards data to our own server. Having successfully integrated the long-range communication, we were ready to move on to the other use case. 
tracking the real-time location of the Minilune using GPS. More specifically, we wanted to send various values to the gateway, such as Minilune's location and the current local date and time. To do that, the balloon control team used the ESP32 microcontroller, which allows different kinds of bus systems to connect with different kinds of sensor modules. It also provides local Wi-Fi connectivity. Several different hardware modules for location tracking were considered. We opted for the QuickTal L96. Again, the Riot libraries made it easier to write the program. Using the Google Maps Flutter package, the app team implemented the widget Google Map inside the body of the app. This way, data would be translated into a point in the map that would visualize the location of the Minilun. Right now, our app can display a map and it can also display the an area of the of the clusters that we have and those clusters will have the the average temperature and the average humidity making small and steady advancements we had already scaled up our initial program and now decided to add more use cases to our backlog as we wanted to show values that represented areas and not only points in the map we went on to build clusters with the minilunes and calculate cluster averages. These areas would also be visualized in the map using colored circles. In the meantime, the concerns about our board being too heavy to be carried by the Minilum grew, with the advanced functionalities and the added amount of cables. That's why our Minilum hardware experts decided to build a custom PCB. This would be much lighter, more compact and would fulfill all our requirements while respecting the weight limitations. Hi, yeah. uh, my name is Lasse. I also worked on the uh, hardware side of the project and we decided to create our own uh, custom board because our original prototype, which is uh, this one, um, was very heavy. It weighs around 50 grams without the white uh, plate, obviously. And um, our balloons can only lift up to 30 to 40 grams, so that's already way too heavy. And that's why we thought it would be wise to create a uh, custom board, which um, would be much smaller, much lighter, and we would uh, not weigh much uh, weight on all those cables, etc. And in the end, our custom board weighs around 10 grams, so we saved 40 grams. And that's okay. a very good weight. The question of being able to lift the balloon up and bring it down when needed also remained unsolved. That's where the idea of designing and 3D printing a mount came up. The mount holds two small valves that control the helium exchange. Combining the last bits of the project and constantly testing our project as a whole, our mini loon was ready to go on its first test fly. And the results were these.